Hey guys, how's it going? It's Amanda. So the other day I teased you guys, I said I have a new 5K setup, I wasn't gonna show it to you guys yet, but today I'm gonna reveal it to you. So here's my new setup. I skipped the new MacBook Pro and the 5K display that comes with it. That's about $4,500. We're gonna talk about that in just a moment. But I have the next best thing. I have a 5K iMac hooked up with a workaround using my iPad Pro 9.7 as the magic touch bar display. And it's right here above my keyboard. I don't have to have my iMac or my MacBook open right next to me because I would have it in clamshell mode anyways. But I still have my old MacBook that I did all my videos with before. I can still use it on the go. It's got all these ports, don't need all those dongles. And I have a 5K screen, but I still have the touch bar and it saved me so much money, so I wanted to share with you guys. So big shout out to Danny Winget. This is his iMac. This is what he was using to edit all his 4K content, so I knew it was gonna handle my stuff no problem. You can pause it and check out the specs, but he had this thing fully upgraded. It's got the i7, four gigahertz, 32 gigs of RAM, the R9 295X with four gigabytes for the GPU, so it's going to be great for editing all my footage. It has a one terabyte fusion drive, and between that GPU and the 32 gigabytes of RAM, this thing should blaze through my editing. So here is how I have it all set up. You can see I have the iPad real close where I can reach that touch bar. And let's go ahead and look at what the price of the MacBook Pro would be if we bought it from Apple. So let's go ahead and select 15 inch. It has the better options that you can get versus the 13 inch. But the base model 15 inch is $2,799 before taxes. If we upgrade everything, it's an extra $200 to bump up that CPU. The storage is an extra $400 to get a one terabyte. It is an SSD where mine just has a fusion drive. The graphics card is an extra $100 to get the top model, and that's it. And for some reason, while I'm recording this on screen, Apple won't show me add to cart or the purchase. So for whatever reason, Apple doesn't wanna show that and have it recorded, I think it's really odd. But I took a screenshot to show you guys because it just would not display the info here while I was recording. So a fully spec'd MacBook Pro 15 inch is $3,499 before taxes. This is insane guys. And then what if you guys want to add the 5K display to it? How about adding that to it so that you have a bigger screen than the 15 inch? Well, that's gonna add $974 to your total plus taxes. So you're looking at close to $5,000 for this setup. And that's just insane in my opinion. I would love to be able to afford that, but I can't afford that. And even if I did, it's just not a great value. I'm sure the image quality on the display looks great, but if we look at this thing just as far as the aesthetics of the screen itself, I don't even think it's that great of a display at my setup. Um, I think the iMac just looks nicer and sleeker just as far as a piece of furniture sitting on my desk. Now the 5K and 5K, I don't know, maybe this one's a little sharper, a little nicer, but I'm quite happy with what I have. And then there's a few other things that just make this a better setup for what I'm gonna do. I use this to edit all my videos, so there is a lot of things I'm gonna be connecting and hooking up to that. And you guys already know about that dongle life. It's kind of insane um, for someone who's actually going to be using all those ports. With my old MacBook Pro, I could still connect all the things that I can with this. This has two Thunderbolt ports. Um, I have four USB ports here. I have just a little SSD if you're wondering what that is. And then there is even still a built-in SD card slot. Now, I don't have to have anything else connected, but to make things just a little bit easier, I do have this aluminum hub from Katech, Katec, I'm not really sure how to say the brand, but it just brings around some ports to the front, so I'm not always having to actually physically take my monitor and turn it to plug in things. So it also adds three little USB ports, and not only the SD card slots around the front, it also adds micro SD slot, which I didn't have on the back side. So I can get by just fine, but for $32, it's just kind of a nice addition to have. So here you can see the touch bar in use. It's working just fine. Um, I did have to pay $20 for this app. If you guys want a whole setup or how to, in case you guys want to add this to your setup, let me know. But everything works great. I love using it in Final Cut Pro. I can just reach up and do some quick actions. All around, it's really fun to have, but I never really thought it was a necessary thing to have. So this works great for me for simple everyday uses. So I am absolutely in love with this setup. I love having the touch bar capabilities, but I'm so much happier with all that money in my bank account. So I spent less than $2,000, picked up the iMac. I already had the MacBook. Um, 
for editing on the go. I already had the iPad. You can use this on an old iPad or even your iPhone if you guys want to add the touch bar, but I saved so much money guys and it's so worth it to me. Again, if you guys want me to do a how-to or a little bit more in depth on the touch bar thing, let me know because I'm not really sure if this is something people care about or not. But thank you guys for watching. Um, if you guys want to see a setup tour, I'll have that. But I'm going to wait just a little bit and since I just did the other one with my old setup. But thank you guys for watching. Hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one.